history where we fill in the holes of history of the Holy Land. I'm your host, Hannah, and today we've got three contestants who are about to be going to the Holy Land themselves and will be competing against one another in a series of virtual challenges for the title of Holy Historian. Now let's meet our contestants. Our first contestant is a swim instructor of the month for 27 months in a row, Reagan. Our second contestant is an Olympic gold medalist in curling, Danny. And our third contestant is a world famous paint and pour instructor, Abby. Thanks everybody for being here today. The rules are pretty simple. You just answer questions, you get points, and the person with the most points at the end becomes the Holy Historian. You guys ready? Guys ready? Okay. okay. Today's episode is centered around the <laughs> Crusades. The Crusades is a really complicated piece of history. The really important part about it is that a lot of the sites were preserved by Crusaders. So there are actually nine official Crusades, plus a few minor ones, depending on who you ask. Today we're going to focus a little bit on the very first one, a little bit on the third, and then a little bit just on the impact overall that it has. The crusade comes from the root word brusade. Brusade comes from a Latin word cruciata, which mm -hmm. means to mark with what symbol? So I want you to draw the symbol that you think that stands for. Right, I know this is the right answer. I know there's a Harry Potter spell that's like cruci crucio or whatever. That's that's how he got his lightning bolt. And Ooh. that's that's the answer. I kind of zoned out a little bit and then really hear the question, so I just drew I drew a cross for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, that was smart, Reagan. Good job. So I'm going to give Reagan a point because a uh, cross is actually the correct answer. <laughs> Let's go. I was holding it wrong. It's, it's like that. Well, I'll give you half a point for that. Is that okay? I'll be honest. I was going to draw a croissant, but I didn't know how to draw that. In the year 1071, Jerusalem was captured by the Seljuk Turk warlord at seas. Word was spreading that the Seljuk rule of Jerusalem had happened and was terrorizing people. Which of the following was the rumor that spread throughout the Byzantine Empire and Europe about the Seljuks? A. Christians were being oppressed by the Seljuks. B. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre had been burned to the ground by the Seljuks. Or C. Seljuks straight up handed the city over to the Mongols in exchange for a lot of money. I'm gonna go with B. I'm gonna go with A. And I think it's not B because B is so easily disprovable. So I'm gonna go with C. <laughs> The correct answer is actually A, so Abby is right. Okay, yeah, Reagan was wrong, though. That's all that really matters. At least you don't have a point yet, though, Danny. I have a point. I <laughs> literally wrote cross for the last answer. You know what? I'll give you a half a point for that, Danny. Thank you. That's not Thank fair. You. Europeans were getting mad because they were like, how dare you oppress our people in the Holy Land? In the year 1092, the vizier, the sultan, and the caliph of the Islamic Caliphate and of the Seljuks all died within a matter of days, leading to a massive massive power vacuum. So the Byzantines hear of that and they're like, it's time to take some action. Since Twitter wasn't really a thing yet, it takes a few years to kind of spread the news. The Byzantine emperor comes to the Pope and he's like, hey, military support? The Pope says, yeah. So the Pope starts preaching about a crusade all throughout Europe and everyone's like, let's go take back the Holy Land, let's do it. Now there are a lot of reasons why people would sign up to be on a crusade. Most people join because it was likely a spiritual thing. You could go, go to the war and that the Pope would like wipe you clear of all your sins. It takes people a little bit of time to raise their army, but there's a French priest named Peter the Hermit. Somehow he was able to raise all these people up faster than the kings could. He tells all these mostly poor people to be like, let's go kill these people and take back our Holy Land. We don't need the king telling us what to do. We're going to do it. Peter leads all these thousands of people across Europe in what is called the People's Crusade, which is kind of the beginning of the first one. They actually never make it to the Holy Land. What happens when Peter the Hermit and his people make it to the Rhineland, which is modern West Germany? I'm gonna say they die. They definitely got enslaved. This was around the same time as Hitler, right? <laughs> More yeah. Like, yeah, so like Hitler was like, and the other people, they were like, and so they like clashed. I think Hitler won, I'm pretty sure. Nobody's exactly right, but Danny and Abby are about half right. So I'm gonna give you each a point. They went through West Germany that happened to have a lot of Jewish people at the time and straight up just started killing all the Jews. The kings and stuff find out and tell them that they are not allowed to keep going. They choose to keep going anyway. And then a group of Seljuk Turks killed them all. This episode of Holy History brought to us by 
by a sponsor. Random number generator. So we have to do the random number generator twice. Four. So Danny, you get to double your point. Oh, that's like a whole point right there. I got six. You're safe, nothing happened. I got three. You get to choose someone and you steal one of their points. So I think I'm going to go with Danny. That's not <laughs> true. That's that's your opinion, honestly. Thank you, random number generator. So the Pope's still looking for people to help him out. He ends up getting four different princes. And so they lead four separate armies down to the Holy Land that equals roughly around 100,000 people. How many of the 100,000 people are thought to be soldiers? They're there's a range that historians have kind of narrowed it down to. And so we're going to do it Price is Right style. So if you get in the range, you get two points. If your answer is above the range, you lose a point. And if your answer is under the range, but the closest to the answer, you get one point. 45,000. Put me down for 40,000. 45,001. The range that historians have figured out is 35,000 to 50,000. So everyone's in the range. So everyone gets two points. Okay, right? I'll take it. I mean, I cannot give it to you. To you. Yeah. Don't give it to them. <laughs> Take the point. They start marching south towards Jerusalem. They have little food, little water. In order to survive, they have to like pillage and loot every city that they come across. It's just pure chaos. When the Crusaders show up in Jerusalem, they only had about 12,000 of the original soldiers. They finally reach Jerusalem and they don't wait. They just start attacking immediately. They breach the walls somehow. They have a lot of fun slaughtering and killing people, burning down synagogues and mosques, you know basic war stuff. All the guys who claim they're in charge sit down and they're like, all right, how, what are we gonna do now? Because the plan was just to take it over. And now that they've done that, they were like, well, what do we do now? Godfrey is elected defender of blank. Now the blank is the name of a famous church in Jerusalem. Notre Dame said the tectonic plates might have shifted to like where Jerusalem was back then. It could be France today or vice versa. So that's like. Notre Dame. Moon. I don't like the open-ended ones. Defender of the church? The correct answer is actually the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. I was close. I mean, I think France is closer than the moon just a little bit. They decide to split up the Holy Land into five different, what they call crusader states. We're only gonna talk about one today. The one that we need to talk about is the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Only around 300 knights and 2,000 infantry soldiers remained in all five of these kingdoms when the war was over. Everybody else went home. Obviously these crusader states were constantly at war or we see groups like the Knights Templar, the Franciscan Custody of the Holy Land. They all start popping up around this time. They want to secure the sites so that future pilgrims like us can go and visit these sites. There's a lot of actually really famous women that come from this time period. Eleanor of Aquitaine, Alice of Antioch, and we don't have time to talk about all of them. But I picked one specific queen to invite to come talk to us today about what she did during the Crusades. Hello, the crowd queen. Hi. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm in her presence. The men might have been all fighting wars, but us women did all the hard work ruling the kingdoms these men set up. Typical men setting things up and then leaving them alone, thinking they'll be fine. Who had to do all the ruling? Women. My father was Baldwin II and was the king of Jerusalem, but my dad was a real feminist. Since I was the oldest, he decided that I I would be queen someday and prepared me to do the job correctly. My husband and I didn't always see eye to eye. My father named me as the heir instead of my son, and when he died, I became queen. By default, my husband became king, and that became a huge issue. He didn't like that I was actually doing my job. Folk banned me from doing anything in politics. I was supposed to be the ruler, and he was using my gender against me. We started fighting a lot and then my husband ended up accusing me of an affair with my cousin and friend Hugh. I know some royals are doing that but I was not. We eventually sat down and worked things out. I became the patron of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. My husband did give me a particular Bible that is now in a big famous museum. That Bible my husband gave me is a Psalter 
which is just the book of Psalms as well as prayers and devotions. This particular Psalter is now famous because of the beautiful art scenes that were hand drawn. Which of the following scenes is not one of the 24 illustrations. A, Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. B, Jesus granting salvation to spirits in hell after the crucifixion. Or C, Jesus turning water into wine. I'm gonna go with B. I'll, I'll say A. A. I, I know my picture books and I'm gonna go with C. Queen Melly, do you mind telling us the right answer and then assigning points however you see fit? The answer was <laughs> C. Danny oh, 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 will on, get- oh, oh, Before you assign points, I just, I just, I just, I mean, I, mean, I just think it's really messed up how your husband is treating you and you know I just I, I just I, I think you deserve better uh, I, I just had to I just had to say that I just had to put that out there Stick with the Queens Queen I think we would make amazing friends look at her she's wearing seeing eyeglasses she's genetically defective so you can't give her any points I will give Danny 10 points since Ooh. he got the question correct. Okay. And I will give Abby and Reagan seven points. Why? I'll take it. I'll take it. Thank you. Because thank I love you. you. Thank you. I tried to do good by my people. Like Danny said, like your husband sounds like kind of a jerk. Like, mm -hmm. I just gotta ask, why would you even get back with him? My husband eventually died in a hunting accident. Ooh. Interesting. So, wow. it wasn't exactly the happiest of endings for him. Long live the queen! I've never died in a hunting accident, just putting that out there. Queen Melisande actually ends up helping bring about the Second Crusade because she ends up having a call to the Pope for military support because all the men are off fighting or die of wars and her husband just like somehow ends up dead in a hunting accident somehow. The Second Crusade is all of just them just trying to defend what they have. Like it's, there's not really anything exciting about that. But the Third Crusade though, things get a little bit more spicy. Queen Melisande's son, I had actually just died and the new heir her grandson was too young to rule and so they put melisande's daughter sabia as queen that didn't really settle well with a lot of people reynold of chatillion decided that he was gonna take advantage of the situation he starts raiding caravans traveling in the area but says he's doing it because the queen told him to she doesn't tell him Guy and Sabia are like, hey, we're king and queen now, and like, you can't, you can't be doing that. The Islamic leader, Saladin, who is getting stolen from, gets mad. Sabia ends up telling her husband, go get this Reynold guy and go to Saladin and tell him, look, we're gonna solve this. What do you think happened to King Guy and Reynold when they go to meet Saladin? I knew a guy named Guy, actually. He oh, yeah. ran over my brother. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that, like, that's just like a guy thing. I don't think they had cars back then, I could be mistaken, but they had horse-drawn carriages. So I'm going to say that the horses ran over all the people. He started telling the other guy about the queen telling him to do it, and then that guy believed him and then killed the king. They ran away to a different country. They run away together? Yeah. Aww. Aww. The right answer is that Saladin is mad and demands that Reynold be killed. So Reynold gets killed. Bye. Um, Horses? King Guy <laughs> actually then gets kidnapped by Saladin and taken off to some other place and is held. So I'm right. Till the king <laughs> can ransom him off. I'm gonna give Reagan one point because technically the king did leave the area. I'm gonna give Abby a point. You got the right idea of the wrong people. I don't know if I can let the horse thing slide. You weren't there. So it might it may have happened, perhaps, maybe. I'll give you half a point. How about that? I'll take half a point. Okay. Right before we finish, we have our random number generator. Five. Danny, you lose two points and you give Eat one of those points to everybody else. I got three. You choose someone and steal one of their points. I gotta steal a point from Abby. I'm sorry, I love you. Four. You get to double your points. Ooh. So I'm gonna tally up the points and see who won. So in third place with 12 and a half points is Danny. In second place with 13 points is Reagan, which means in first place with 27 points and the winner of Holy History is Abby. Thanks everybody for playing today. Thanks to Queen Melisande for helping us out. Thanks everybody watching at home. This has been another episode of Holy History and we'll see you next time.
Adam. Adam. Hm? 